artificial intelligence is here and it's helping entrepreneurs take on the big players. The technology is helping to spur on thousands of startups in Europe alone. A new report by MMC Ventures highlights that almost 8% of 2018's new companies were putting artificial intelligence at the heart of their value proposition. MMC Ventures head of research David Kellner joined me to discuss the surge and he explained why all may not be as it quite appears. Our overall message is actually a very positive one, which is that we've entered the era of the AI entrepreneur. And what I mean by that is, if you go back five years ago, only about one in 50 startups were using AI to disrupt uh, sectors and business processes. Today, one in 12 of all startups across Europe are using AI to deliver value. And that's an incredibly exciting time. It's, it's entrepreneurs that are driving this paradigm shift to AI. So they're moving, moving fast. Absolutely. Now, there is a need beyond that to, to go the extra level of detail. As, as you highlight, we individually reviewed nearly 3,000 purported AI startups across Europe. We did find that in about 40% of cases, um, there was no particular evidence of AI that was core to that company's value proposition. Now, these aren't startups misleading anyone. This is just them being misclassified typically by, by other companies and other parties. But it does mean it's important that if you're um, a big company that's employing the services of these, these startups, or if you're an investor looking to invest in this important trend, that you go the extra mile in your due diligence to make sure you, you know what you're betting on. You said that they're not deliberately misleading people, mm. but I'm assuming they're not correcting anyone that's... Um giving them the value or the benefit of the doubt here. Sure. I, think, I think actually many are. I think, you know, many companies with great technology are, are, are keen to shout about it. I think what you find, though, is that the capital dynamics around AI companies are unique. And what our research revealed is that AI companies raise, on average, between about 15 and 50% more capital than non-AI companies, and they do so at higher valuations. So it's no bad thing, and it's quite helpful for a company to be deemed an AI company. Quite fascinating. Views on this, though, are mixed. Artificial intelligence has been hailed as humanity's potential saviour, then by others as our possible nemesis. Have we actually been mislabeling it all along? David Kellner says it's all down to nuance, telling me what the actual capabilities are for artificial intelligence right now and in the future. We look at what's called machine learning, which yes. is the more modern form of artificial intelligence, which uh, excuse me, means systems that can improve uh, through experience rather than following more rigid sets of rules. Right. I think that's the difference between the so-called big data movement of maybe a decade ago and machine learning today. And if you look at the impact that has, the reason that we're moving towards autonomous vehicles, um, the reason that we can have incredible image recognition systems, the reason that we can move to the era of automated diagnosis in medicine is because of this era of machine learning. So I think it's it's systems that for the first time can really improve with experience. That's what separates this paradigm shift from simply intelligently processing large amounts of data. So we've had guests come on and say, look, winter's coming as far mm. as artificial intelligence is concerned because we've had this hype yeah. before and then everyone's realised that we don't have human intelligence and we're not there yet. You're saying that the, the width here is very broad and actually computers are learning. It's not just about doing something that a hum human can do at fast speed. Yeah, I, I respectfully disagree with those people. I think, I think two things can be true at once. Yes. The, uh, the first is that there is an enormous amount of hype around AI. That's <laughs> undoubtedly true. Um, and sometimes expectations for progress in the short term can get a little ahead of what can be delivered. But I think it's also the case that the progress around AI has been very real. And the reason we had those kind of use cases I described earlier is because of very real progress in, in this field. What we are, though, and it is important to, to separate, is years away from what's called artificial general intelligence. And this is where we can have systems that can perform the kind of breadth of intellectual tasks that, that a human can. We, we are definitely years away from that, if, if ever. But in a range of sectors today, from manufacturing through to retail through to healthcare, there are dozens of more application-specific uses for AI that are delivering real revenue growth, real cost savings for companies today. While more and more startups are jumping on the artificial intelligence bandwagon, some sectors are being left behind. Think education, think government. And these are the very areas that need to catch up because people, of course, are going to need them to react when artificial intelligence changes the jobs we do. 
If we look at different industries, we can see that some sectors like high tech and financial services were early to invest in AI and as a result of that are now leading today in terms of adoption. Whereas sectors like say healthcare that were a little bit slower to adopt AI have now awoken to its potential and are now kind of moving up the field versus some laggard sectors like government and education and charities that are really falling quite behind the, the, the adoption curve. And as a result of that, one implication is that we will probably all engage with AI more as consumers than as uh, citizens, for yes. example. Yes. What does that mean for jobs? Because I think that is one of the big fears here mm. when we're talking about facilitating things like automation. There's a fear that yeah. even if the result is that more jobs are ultimately created, we're perhaps not going to be skilled enough to, to yeah. participate. So, so I think it's a really important issue. And actually, I'll just add a broader point that, you know, AI presents I think profoundly positive and exciting yeah. uh, potential, but, but there are risks like job displacement that need to be openly discussed and, and mitigated. And I think with job displacement, um, there are some roles that AI, I, I think, will probably directly automate, and they range from maybe telemarketing through to truck driving. Mm. But in, in many and most others, AI will augment capability. The, the thing that worries me, though, is that the the large number of people that are engaged in some of those roles coupled with a, a narrowing of the pyramid of similarly skilled roles that they could undertake could mean that whether or not AI creates or destroys more jobs in the long term, this short period of time in which some people are displaced yeah. without the ability to be reabsorbed into the workforce, I think could create um, social dislocation with some political consequences. How, how much of a, a piece of time, a time frame are you talking about having that crunch take place and that there simply isn't the time to retrain people? Five years? I think over the next, uh, broadly I would say five to 15 yeah. years, I think is when you'll see quite a lot of these technologies bite. Breaks my heart that education is the one where it's, we're lacking as well. So uh, it's the government and education, the two things that have to come together to fix this are actually the two that are most lacking. Uh, absolutely. And I think, again, there's a broader point there, which is if, if you think about those lagging sectors, government, education, charities, there's a real risk that the most vulnerable members of society could be among the last to benefit from this technology. A huge challenge there. On the bright side, though, you're stuck with me for a little while longer.